How is it that central AC systems used to last upwards of 30 years, and now it's half of that? Is that because all new AC systems are junk? Well, the answer is pretty surprising. Hi, this is Kenneth with Atlas AC, and at any point during this video, if you find it to be helpful, please hit the like button, and that will really help me out with the YouTube algorithms. So over the last couple decades, there have been massive changes in the design of HVAC systems. An easy example that I can use to explain all these changes is actually from the automotive industry. So I was lucky enough to grow up on a ranch in Mountain Home, Texas, and we had an old Toyota Land Cruiser that we used as a ranch truck. It was built in the 60s before there was heavy emissions regulations and before technology got jam-packed into each vehicle. And simply put, there just wasn't a lot going on with this Toyota Land Cruiser from the 60s. So much so where my brother and I could even work on it as kids to keep it running. Whether that was replacing the alternator, starters, water pumps, spark plugs and distributors, and rebuilding brakes, then learning how to drive without brakes. No matter what we put the truck through, it just kept going and going and going. And not to mention that you had an 11 and a 12 year old that was able to maintain the truck and do some of the basic repairs. So if we fast forward and look at a brand new truck today and it follows all the emissions guidelines along with all the technology that's now being added to these vehicles. There's now a thousand more parts and pieces that go into these vehicles along with sensors and computers and so on. And it's almost to the point when a headlight burns out that the vehicle won't even crank up. Do you think that there's even a remote chance of putting 40 years of wear and tear on the vehicle, then turn it into a ranch truck, have your grandkids maintain it, make all the repairs, and still expect it to climb a mountain when you need it to? You can clearly see that vehicles are not designed the same way as they were back in the 60s. The same thing is true with HVAC equipment. New HVAC equipment is less durable, it's a lot more finicky, and super sophisticated. And it's just simply not going to last as long. So what is the catalyst that had led us down this road? And is the lifespan of AC systems going to continue getting shorter and shorter? And is there any way to squeeze extra years out of an AC system? I'm about to answer all those questions. So the number one thing that had the biggest impact on the longevity of an AC system is actually efficiency. So as we all know, the electric rates keep going up and up and up. And what happened is many homeowners started to adjust to more and more efficient uh, equipment for their homes because they're tired of paying high electric bills. So basically, energy rates keep getting higher and higher, and a lot of that can be offset through efficiency, and many homeowners saw that. And we also have the utility companies to incentivize many homeowners to use a more efficient system. So that way, as a city grows and in turn the energy demand grows, if everybody starts using more energy efficient uh, HVAC systems, now they're less likely to have to build a new power plant to supply all the new residents. On top of that, there's a very big push for the electrification of everything. So now, if a city or a state is not growing in population, that doesn't matter because the energy demand is still growing, which also leads to higher and higher utility rates for the foreseeable future. And then we have the DOE, the Department of Energy, who started getting involved in the early 90s. And they're responsible for setting the minimum efficiency standards for HVAC equipment. So before 92, it was pretty much anything goes. So now the minimum SEER rating in our region is 14.3 SEER 2, which is incredibly more efficient than the models that were being used back in the 90s. So basically, with all these forces at play, manufacturers had to make their equipment more energy efficient. So now you're probably asking, what does efficiency have to do with longevity? So if we simply look at a condensing fan motor, and if we're asking the question, how do we make that motor more efficient? Well, the first thing that you have to do is make it lighter. So you need lighter fan blades, you need a lighter shaft that connects the fan to the motor, you need lighter components going into the motor, and so on. Also, it doesn't have to work as hard to turn the fan, making it more energy efficient. And simply put, these materials are just not gonna last as long. And that's just the condensing fan motor. Now do that throughout the entire HVAC system. So you used to be able to buy one HVAC system to get you through 30 years. Now you have to buy two. So were all these changes worth it? Well, arguably, yes. So here in Texas, when gas prices are cheap, we see a lot of folks go out and buy big trucks. And the moment when gas prices get expensive, we see a lot of for sale signs on those big trucks. So it all revolves around the cost of energy. So if energy was super cheap, then those older systems that we had back in the day would make the most sense. 
And unlike fuel prices that goes up and down, utility prices only go one way, and that is up. So now if you're asking the question, is this trend going to continue? Is the new equipment that we're buying today going to have a shorter life than my last system? Well, the answer is, it depends. As equipment continues to get more and more delicate, there are two things that you need to look at. So the first being the install and the second being the maintenance. So the big question that we're trying to answer here is how do we get the new system to run as optimally as possible so that there's no unnecessary burden on these components? So everybody has heard a million times that the installation is the most important part in getting a new AC system. But what does that even mean? So the correct way to look at a new HVAC installation is almost as a lightweight remodel. So every home is different and every customer runs their ACs differently. Let's say you have a 2200 square foot home and it's a two story house. It was built in the 80s and your master bedroom is upstairs on the west wall. And you run it around 75 degrees during the summertime and the only complaint is you're just not quite satisfied with the airflow in your master bedroom. So let's say we do a site survey, gather all the details about the house, the current system, the current duct work, you know, all the ins and outs, the electricals, so on and so forth. So after running a heat load, we find that a properly sized AC for this house would be a four ton system, which makes perfect sense because that's what you have right now. And the last system is 20 years old. And after diving into the ductwork, we find that it is undersized by 300 CFMs or by three quarters of a ton. But other than that, everything else looks good. An inexpensive solution to fix this problem would be to simply add two additional duct runs to your existing ductwork. You can add one to the master bedroom where you're having trouble and then add the other one over the staircase. And bam, you just went from three and a quarter tons worth of ductwork to four tons worth of ductwork and it didn't cost very much. And now the system isn't going to have to run as hard in order to cool your house. Now with that one little issue addressed, the equipment is now set up for success. It should be able to last anywhere from 15 to 20 years. However, if we left the ductwork the same and simply swapped out the equipment, not only is the system not going to run very efficiently and your indoor air climate being all sorts of messed up, but you're also going to be burning up $2,000 ECM motors every other year. So if you're asking, how could something so simple have such a big impact on the longevity of the system? Well, I just did a podcast with Carrier Corporate, and we touch on the importance of the installation of a new HVAC system. That should be out in about two weeks, so be on the lookout. Now to go into everything that we look at whenever we create a solution for a customer and all the details of the actual install itself is just going to take another video. What I can tell you is, if you're in the market to replace your HVAC system and you have a contractor that comes out and he spends an hour, hour and a half gathering all the information needed and that's about the right amount of time needed to understand all the parameters of the house, what you can and cannot do and then from there you can start building out solutions that's right for you without damaging the equipment. Now if you have another contractor that comes out and they only spend 15 minutes looking at the equipment before giving you a bid, let's just say you have better odds in Vegas that that install is going to turn out correctly. And lastly, we have ongoing preventative maintenance. And what we're trying to accomplish here is to make sure that the equipment is all running at factory spec. Is there anything weird going on with the system? Is there any wear parts that are starting to go out? Is the equipment clean so it can operate efficiently? By taking care of the equipment throughout the duration of the life of the system, you're essentially ensuring that the system is going to be operating as efficiently as possible which in turn means it's not having to overwork in order to heat and cool your house. And by making sure that the equipment is not being overworked, you're basically guaranteeing that you're going to get the longest life possible out of the system. So going back to the original question, how long are these newer systems going to last? Is the life expectancy going to be shorter than the previous generation before? And my answer to that is no, as long as everything is done correctly. However, if it is not done correctly, yes, it is going to shorten the life of the system. If you found this video to be helpful, please hit the like button. We also have free buyer's guides and price lists on our website that you might want to check out. Until next time, have a good one.